Today on Profs Huddle, the Rowan University field hockey team is on their way to earning an NJAC championship. With a 5-0 record in the conference, they continue to work their way to the top. And football finally got their first one of the season. That and more coming up on Profs Huddle. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Profs Huddle. I'm Jade Ionese. And I'm Trayvon Reed. The Profs have been busy this past week as multiple, te as multiple teams secure spots in the NJAC tournament. Let's take a look at the women's soccer team. In a game that helped secure their seeding for the tournament, our women's soccer team celebrated its eight seniors. We'll start in the 37th minute. The Profs are charging, and Kelsey Stengel, a senior, threads a pass into the box, where Sarah Bergen gets a pass to keeper. That's her second goal of the season. The rest of the game was all about defense. The Profs held the Cougars to just one shot through the entire game for their seventh shutout of the year. This one ends 1-0 Profs and helps secure their bid for the second seed in the tournament. While that was an important conference matchup, their next game was important for other reasons. The Profs took on Maine Fort Kent at home last Monday. We'll start in the eighth minute as Jessica Logan redirected a ball from Emma DeMaze to score her third goal of the season. Let's take another look. We'll jump ahead now to the 22nd minute as DeMaze again gets an assist, this time to Aiden Sheehan, who flicks the ball up and over the keeper for her eighth goal of the season. Calista Burke, a freshman goalkeeper for the Profs, got the first start of her career and came up big with a few saves. She helped control the game as the Profs went on to win this one 2-0 and finally earned Coach Scott Leacott's 300th career win. In his 21st season as the head coach of the women's soccer team, Leacott reached the milestone right here in Glassboro. Let's hear from him after the game. I mean, obviously, it's, if you have 300 wins, and I think it's, what, 21 seasons, you have to have good teams and you have to have good players. So, it's a, you know, it's kind of a tribute to everybody who's played here. And I'll enjoy it with my family tonight and very appreciative of the team. It's a reflection of the program and a reflection of how good things have been around here. So. The final score for this one was 2 to nothing in favor of the Profs, with goals from Emma DeMaze and Aiden Sheehan. We're incredibly happy for Coach Leacott. Now, let's pivot to SB Gym, where volleyball continued the good news. Last week, the women's volleyball team secured their spot in the playoffs as the Profs took down Ramapo 3-0 with big scores of 25-13, 25-16, and 25-10. They are now the number one seed in the NJAC tournament and will have home court advantage throughout with a bye into the semifinal round. Brianna Newson totaled 10 kills, Natalie Ogden followed with 9, and Courtney Roden put down 8, putting the team at .357 on 84 attempts with 40 kills and 10 errors. Simone Sperano hit a personal milestone, earning her 1,000th career dig. The milestone happened in the third set and she finished the night with 8 digs and a pair of aces. Shifting focus back outside to Richard Wacker Stadium, where our football team finally got their first win in the season. The Profs open up the game with a 24-yard field goal from Jake Hurler, capitalizing a seven-play, 65-yard opening drive. William Patterson would respond with a five-yard touchdown run from Marcel Mason, putting the Pioneers ahead 7-3. The Profs defense would step up, intercepting Spencer Lee's pass at the four-yard line, setting up Hurler's second field goal, making the score 7-6. Late in the second quarter, quarterback Mike Husband launches the ball up to John Maldonado, who makes a miraculous catch in double coverage for a 69-yard touchdown. The scoring isn't over yet as the Profs would take control of the game. Mike Husney would lead the row in offense down the field to begin the second half, capping a seven-play, 44-yard drive with a dive across the goal line, making the score 19-7. With a minute left in the game, Jay Carlo would drill a 30-yard field goal to end the game. The final score, your Rome Profs 25, William Patterson Pioneers 10.
feels good to get one in the win column. Finally, our men's soccer team faced off against Montclair State on Saturday. This past Saturday, Rowan's men's soccer team celebrated their senior night with a matchup against the fifth-ranked Montclair State. All three seniors, Junior Miranda, Aaron Robertson, and James Weinberg, were honored for their last game of the regular season. In the 55th minute of the game, the Red Hawks scored a goal and scored another eight minutes later, putting the Red Hawks up 2-0. to zero. Then, in the 73rd minutes of the game, the profs Matthias Carrion scored off a cross from Chad Yates making it a 2-1 to one game. Prof senior James Weinberg worked hard in net, making seven saves for the Profs, and midfielder Luke Yates also made an amazing save for the Profs in the second half. But the Profs' offense wasn't able to produce any more goals, ending the game 2-1. to one. Now as the season is coming to an end, Let's take a look at the playoff pictures for our props. We'll send it over to Kara to break it down for us. Thanks, Trayvon. The props this season seem to be all over the place, much like New Jersey's weather. For the field hockey team, there's nothing but sunshine ahead as they clinch the first seed in the playoffs with their ninth straight win last Wednesday. The road to the championship runs through Glassboro's hockey pitch. Volleyball is right there with them, wall-to-wall -wall sunshine inside SV Gym as the props clinched the first seed last Tuesday. The first round bye will help the ladies rest up and get ready to win their first conference title since 2004. The forecast is reading partly sunny for women's soccer as they hope for a first round bye. They need a win over Rutgers Camden in the last regular season game to secure the second seed. The road to their first conference championship since 2016 might just run through the borough. For the men's team, we're looking at Cloudy skies for their playoff run this year. They need to win their final game against Rutgers Camden to hope for the fourth seed. It's shaping up for the profs to play either Stockton or TCNJ in the first round. A heated rivalry between both schools could be the spark the profs need to take them all the way and win the first time since 2003. And finally, if you have any spare umbrellas, send them over to Wacker Stadium because it's raining cats and dogs on the football team. We'll just leave it at that. Get those umbrellas out. Good luck to all the profs. We're rooting for you. Although fall sports are nearing the end, don't you worry, Rowan has still sports coming up in the winter. After the winter season was canceled in 2020, both the men's and women's basketball team, swimming and diving team, and the track and field team will all be ready to get back out there and represent the profs this 2021-22 winter season. Speaking of a team that's ready to get back out there, coming off of their 2019 NJAC championship, Rowan's women's basketball team is ready to take the court once again. I recently spoke with head coach Poles and captain Grace Marshall to discuss the impact of losing last year's season and what the team has to look forward to in 2021-22. The Rowan University women's basketball team was a force to be reckoned with in 2019. After going 25-4 on the regular season and 16-2 in conference play, they won the NJAC championships in 2019. Last season in 2020, the season was canceled due to COVID, and now here in 2021, they are back and eager to get on the court again in hopes for another NJAC championship. It's a blessing just to be back here. Uh, it's been a long road for me personally, but the team has been sitting down for two seasons, and we're eager to get back and establish what we started uh, two seasons ago. The thing that will make or break us is our team chemistry and how we work together. Hawks will open up the season on November 17th in Massachusetts for the Tyler Tip-Off Tournament before returning here to Glassboro on November 14th for their home opener against Widener. <laughs> this will be the first time since early 2020 in the NCAA Tournament that this Crofts team will be playing in front of fans. It's going to be wonderful. We, we welcome all the, all the, the, uh, the student body here and to support us and get on other teams and make it hard for them. Uh, that's what Cal's atmosphere is all about. Marshall is prepared for the season to start and is more motivated than ever to get back out on the court again. Well, we do have some underclassmen who are nervous about getting the plays, so just encouraging them and helping them out during practice especially. Um, just letting them know that like they're here for a reason and we're all in this together. Uh, those are really important things. To, keep, you know, motivating my teammates. As the clock winds down for the season approaching, 
both Coach Poles and Marshall feel prepared as the season begins to start. As for other winter sports, both the men's and women's swimming and diving teams started off the season at home this past weekend. The men's swim and dive team beat York College 182 to 70, and the women's team defeated York College 181 to 61. Both the men's and women's basketball teams will compete in their home openers on November 17th. And now back to you, Trayvon and Jade. Thanks, Kara. I want to wish a good luck to all of our profs in their playoff runs. That's all we have for this week's episode of Profs Huddle. I'm Jade Ionese. And I'm Trayvon Reed. Have a great rest of the week, and we'll see you next time. Go Profs.